what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pre-production prototype for a knife that's about to release for pre-order in, I don't know, just a few days from the time that I'm uploading this. They'll be available on September 15th. This is an interesting little knife, and I don't want to say little. It's, a, it's actually a pretty good-sized knife. And oh, what a fantastic action this puppy's got. And it doesn't matter how you want to deploy it. If you want to flick it, it flicks. If you want to thumb flick it, it thumb flicks. If you want to slow roll it like a Sabenza, it does that as well. It just doesn't have a front flipper, nor does it have a flipper tab. This knife desperately is begging for a flipper tab. It, the way this action works... The way it fits in your hand, the way it's shaped, it's begging for a flipper tab. It really is. But not everybody's a flipper fan. I get that. Some people just like to flick and roll, and that's totally fine. As you see, the action is wonderful on this knife. What you're looking at here is the Evolved EDC SYN. S -Y -N. Uh, this is actually manufactured by Best Tech. And we've seen Best Tech doing some really incredible stuff over the past two years or so. They've always been doing good stuff, but they've gotten significantly better over the past couple of years. And it's like a light year's jump. And I'm, I'm extremely excited to see more and more and more amazing knives coming out of them. Um, I've partnered with Best Tech. I have a couple of knives coming out with them from my designs and... I, I made that decision based on how many knives I've handled of theirs that have been so incredibly impressive. Their knives that sell for, you know, let's say in the $300 price range, feel like they're worth double that. They feel like they're five, $600 knives. The quality, the fit and finish, the action, the grinds, everything is just so well done now that they almost become boring. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, they're so good that it's like everyone that comes out, you're like, okay, well, I want that. No, I want the next one too. Oh, and I want that one too. There's nothing for you to go, oh, I don't really like this one. Or, you know, I've heard the blades aren't centered well. And I've heard people have had action issues and lockup issues and lock rock and none of that, nothing. They're, they're so predictable, it's boring. And that's a really good thing to have that level of consistency. A lot of companies are trying very, very, very hard to get to that point and just haven't yet. Uh, the pre-order for these, as I mentioned before, is set for September 15th, 2022. Since I never delete my videos, they stay up forever. I do try to clarify what year I'm recording this. September 15th, 2022, you'll be able to order these. How much, you ask? Ah, very simple. $270 if you want a Micarta scale version. Eh, everybody's doing Micarta. I don't get the whole Micarta thing. Or $280 for the forged carbon fiber. Now, Tyler, the owner of the brand, is, is calling this marbled carbon fiber. Um, if, if what he has coming is going to be marble carbon fiber, that's great. But it's different. This is not marbled carbon fiber. Um, I don't know if there was a miscommunication with Best Tech or, or something else, uh, but this is the forged carbon fiber. I know this because I've worked with it a lot. I've made a lot of knives at forged carbon fiber. 
It's one of my favorites. It finishes really, really well. It has a great look to it. Um, it's not quite as choppy looking as the old um, shredded carbon fiber. It, it, it's the same basic idea where they're taking the shreds of carbon fiber uh, waste and byproduct, but they're forging it together under extraordinarily high compression and that's what creates this unique look and this unique feel. These are really, really great scales. I uh, really, really dig this thing a lot. Um, I'm also a huge fan of bolster locks, man. I really like bolster locks. So you've got that the integrity of a big, thick frame lock, but you're not losing the looks on the other side. So a lot of times with a frame lock, you'll have your presentation side, which will have a nice scale or inlays or something. And then the other side will just be plain titanium in a frame lock. But with a bolster lock, you're able to mimic the presentation side on the lock side. And the bolster, excuse me, the, uh, the scale, my apologies, will act as an over travel for the frame lock. I don't know how well you can see that here, but, and I've talked about this for, you know, years and years, but if you're wondering, well, why does the scale look like it's separating from the frame? It's not. That's the lock bent over like all frame locks would be. I'll pull out another one here just so you see what I'm talking about. So it's a frame lock that has a scale over one side. That's all it is. So that acts as an over travel for the lock bar. Neato. You also see that you're going to have a steel lock bar insert. So you have steel on steel lockup. Here you can see it in there. You've got ceramic bearings. You've got ceramic detent. That's why this thing feels the way that it does. Okay, so let's get this over here and, and get these specs finished and done and over with. <clears throat> uh, so it is a titanium bolster lock with your choice of micarta or the carbon fiber scales, 270 or 280. It's 8 inches long in overall length, blade length of 3.5 inches, with a cutting edge of three and a quarter inches because of the sharpening choil that's been put in there. Not a bad idea on this blade, too. The blade steel is L-Max. We don't get a chance to hear that very often, so I'm glad to see something besides M390. I have no problems with M390, but things become repetitive. When you hear the same thing over and over, you're kind of like, oh, I want to hear something new. Well, there you go. L-Max. Fantastic choice for EDC steel. These are also hollow ground, which is a newer thing among these uh, Chinese-produced uh, production knives, is, is seeing them do hollow grinds. And I'm going to give you a comparison here against another hollow ground worn cliff in a minute, and I think you're going to be very impressed with the results. Uh, as I mentioned before, ceramic bearing, ceramic detent, and that is it for the specs. So, what's the deal? Where, where the hell did this knife come from, even? Well, a uh, gentleman's name is Tyler, and he wants to basically become a one-stop EDC shop with more than just knife designs on his website. But right now, he's kicking off his venture with two knife designs, this being the very first one because it was the first one that he designed. Um, so the Sin is the first one, and there's a second design coming out, uh, which I'm much more excited about. This is a cool knife. Nothing wrong with this knife at all. But it's the second design that speaks to me more on a personal level. So I, I promise you, I'm going to do everything I can to review that knife uh, before anybody gets a chance to see it. I, I'm very excited about that knife. Uh, anyway, so he's working up those two designs with Best Tech. Alongside these production runs, he's doing something a little bit different. He's going to be offering customized variants of these knives alongside... Uh, the regular production versions. He's going to be working with Black Lab Custom Shop out of Alabama. So they're basically uh, going to pimp a handful of these knives. Uh, think of how Custom Knife Factory has done their releases over the past few years. Uh, they'll sell, they'll make two or three hundred knives, right, in a run, and they'll take maybe 25 of that run, separate them, and have them individually customized, where each one is different. They'll have carvings in the titanium, or they'll be anodized in different ways, 
Uh, they'll have different blade finishes and things like that. Well, that's what Tyler wants to do with his knives as well, so that you have some really good options. You can have the run of the mill that everybody else can get, still limited, but it's the open availability ones for 270 and 280, or for a little bit more, again, that's gonna depend on what's being done to them, uh, that additional price. You pay that additional price and you'll have a one of a kind. That's pretty cool. I really dig that idea. Uh, another few things that I really like about this design that he's done very, very well is it has a very slightly contoured frame. It's not overly rounded where it feels like this shapeless blob in your hand. You feel very much like it's a slab-sided, flat titanium knife in your hand, but it's just a little bit contoured. It's a little bit more ergonomic. The flat pivot looks great. I, I'm a big, big fan of flat face pivots. I think it looks great. The sculpted clip is a really nice touch. Should have been blind screwed. I'm, I'm, uh, there's no way I can not say that. That should have been blind screwed. Should have been pocketed and blind screwed and we just had a nice clip with no hardware exposed. Not the worst thing in the world. And again, the money saved by having exposed screws it, for a $280 knife, this is nuts. To get a sculpted titanium pocket clip in a $280 knife that has all of these other features already as well is nuts. I'm so glad he didn't do a cheap bent wire clip or a, a paper clip looking clip, none of that garbage. It's a nice, high quality clip and it works great in the pocket. It looks handsome. It matches the knife design wonderfully. This is the way it should be done. Don't offer me a $400 knife with a cheap ass wire clip on it acting like you can't. No, yeah, no, you can. All right, this has LMAX. It's hollow ground. It's a bolster lock. It's got expensive scales. And it's got that sculpted pocket clip at 280. So don't give me your excuses. I don't want to hear them. Now, what is up with these ridiculous humps in the snout of this Warncliffe? Well, I'm number one, I'm sure it's aesthetic. It's to make it stand out and look different. Because as a Warncliffe, it already looks different because it's so long and it's so narrow. Most Warncliffes are going to be a little bit taller and have like a stubbier look to them. That's just how worn cliffs tend to look. Here's another worn cliff to give you a comparison. So they tend to be fairly tall in the way that they're shaped. This one's not. It's narrow and it's long, so it has a very sleek look. Generally, worn cliffs don't look all that sleek until you start really crazily redesigning them, which is what Tyler did. What I like is the first depression here because I could take this and I can start, I can slice down boxes, I can carve into something because I've got a good amount of control with my index finger here. Now, if I really want to choke up onto the blade, I don't like ever handling my blade because that's just oh, an easy way for me to get cut. But I suppose I could use the blade window there. And then you, you have a little bit more forward force you can apply to it uh, for cutting stuff. Uh, that one, I'm just going to call that for aesthetics. I see no reason for that. There's, is there any function for it when it's closed? Well, your pinky kind of drops on it. I mean, I don't know why you'd be holding your knife like this, but boing, boing, boing. Yeah, okay, whatever. So, Warren Cliffs are great utilitarian designs, right? They're great for cutting down boxes. They're great for uh, slicing things. Uh, let's say you were sectioning a large piece of uh, cardboard or thin balsa wood or something like that, and you had your lines drawn out, and you just simply drop the edge, the corner of the edge, and the tip right there. And it's very easy to do your slicing. Just like that. Super simple, super easy. By the way, somebody said, some person... I, which I can't believe they even did it, on one of my recent videos, said, I can't believe you're putting that $5,000 knife on that stone. This, this is, guys, this is a 
a linoleum kind of like plasticky tile that I use. It looks like granite, it looks like stone, but it's not. I would never bring people's knives out here and toss them onto stone. I mean, give me some credit, at least, a little bit, right? Uh, so, no, I was not just dragging his edge on his uh, production prototype across uh, some kind of marble or granite or something. It just looks that way for photography and, and now video purposes. So anyway, uh, it definitely gives you that reach. It gives you that control over the blade. It's better than holding it back here or even here to do something uh, because you're, the length of the tip is so far away, it's easy to kind of screw up. When you're up here on it, you've got a lot more control of where that, that corner is going to go when you're cutting. The jimping, by the way, is done very nicely. Uh, it's very subtle. It's not overdone. It's not going to chew your damn hands up, which is a refreshing thing. And there's a 45 degree bevel going all the way down the spine of the blade, which softens everything as well. And that's also being replicated around the blade window because they know that you're going to be opening it and flicking it by that window. You ever watch somebody, especially on the reverse flick when they're doing this, and you're watching them and you see like dust in the air it, it's it's shavings off of their fingernails because they're using a blade that doesn't have a nice chamfered opening and it's sharp and it's literally slicing little shards of fingernail off every time that fingernail breaks away when they're flipping it open this isn't going to do that to you it's nicely chamfered all the way around it did a great job on the uh, on the bevels. This comes down super thin. Let's take a look at oh look at that. Give you a comparison. Here's the Jaeger M, which we all drool over. Yeah, the Jaeger M does get uh, quite a bit thinner, but that's because it is a taller blade and a much much higher grind. But this is still going to be great for EDC. It's not going to be quite as slicey, but it's still going to be nice and slicey. Let's give you some size comparisons here. And uh, I do need to weigh this. So putting it up against the Jaeger M, uh, we'll have uh, a little bit of a size difference there. Let me grab my scale real quick. <clears throat> so there you see the Jaeger M is uh, much more compact. Putting it up against my custom Plunkett Warncliffe XL. Quite a bit smaller, but look, also notice how sleek, how much sleeker it is. How the narrowness of it just really complements the design. It kind of makes it look a little futuristic, in, in my opinion anyway. Uh, here is a, another great bolster lock, one of my favorite knives ever and a what I think is one of the best possible choices in an EDC size to carry as every single day carry, being lightweight and really the perfect size, small enough to be unobtrusive, but large enough to actually be a performer for real cutting tasks. And you'll notice that the sin is pretty much identical in its overall length and almost identical in its blade length with more cutting edge. So there you have it. This is actually going to be a great EDC size. And uh, yeah, I mean, my Terrain 365, this is the, the Invictus ATB. Uh, phenomenal knife, great size, a great little pocket buddy. And that's right there along with it. Even in how sleek it is, how slim it is, the whole works. And uh, now let's get some weight comparisons here. Give you an idea. You, I mean, I don't, don't really have to compare. You already have in your head what your favorite size, or excuse me, what your favorite weight is going to be, or your acceptable weight. How about that? 4.1 ounces. Most people are going to be perfectly happy with that as an everyday carry. This was a lot lighter than I expected it to be when I had seen the pictures. And when it arrived, and I, I saw the size of it, I'm like, wow, that's a lot bigger than it should be for how little it weighs. 
I was wonderfully surprised, very pleasantly surprised. Uh, the action is addictive. It is a really, really nice action. Very, very fast. Very, very smooth. Solid lockup every single time. But you don't have to be some, you know, weirdo that has to flick a knife every single time you touch it. Uh, even if you're opening it like an old man, you're just doing that old slow roll. It goes to full lock. The detent feels great for it. That nice, nice hollow grind is going to be a good cutter for you. And it's handsome with that bolstered look. I love bolster locks. I, I think that they're some of the most handsome designed knives out there on the market. I don't know what it is. It just seems, I don't want to say more professional or more, certainly not more dressy, but I, do you guys know what I mean? Maybe it's, I, I don't know how to put it into words, but there's something a little more special about having a bolster, particularly an angled bolster, over not having a bolster. And I love the look of my Jaeger M. I don't want to change a thing about it. I truly love it. But the difference between a frame lock and a bolster lock, there's something additional to the look. The Is it boldness? No, that's not even really it. But there's something about having a bolster lock that I very, very much appreciate. Um, as you guys can see, I am, of course, a very big fan of Warncliffe's. So, uh, of course, I'm going to like this knife. Is it the greatest knife release of the year? No, I don't think so. I think it's a it's an amazing first-time effort. Uh, but I do think his second design is going to find more popularity. I think there's going to be more people that will be attracted to it. Uh, you could go check out his Instagram and see exactly what I'm talking about. He has put the uh, renders out there. But I like it. It's handsome. It's utilitarian. It's useful. There's nothing that holds this knife back from being a performer. Um, you do have a lanyard opening back here, which doesn't bother me at all. I know some people uh, may ding it for that because they don't want to see a hole in their knife because they don't like lanyards. Okay, whatever, dude. Um, I totally understand, but it doesn't bother me. Uh, it's got a nice three-quarter length backspacer. Very clean, very well done. Um, if there were things I would change, I, I wouldn't have so much hardware exposed on the knife. I'm not a big fan of it. I really don't like it. I understand that sometimes it's the best way to go. And again, he's shooting for price point here. If this was going to be $350, I guarantee you wouldn't see hardware. You would have a blind uh, screwed clip, and you wouldn't see hardware on the outside of the scales. But it's not $350. It's $280. That is a very, 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 very low price, especially right now. Everybody and their brothers coming out uh, with really, really cool production knives from overseas. And when we get below $400, we get excited. So to get under 300 yeah, that's pretty crazy. Anything else I would change? Um, there's a little bit of harshness right here. Let me zoom in nice and tight. There we go. That corner right there. It will, you'll feel it when you're holding the knife just a little bit. You can definitely encounter it with your thumb back here. I mean, I can actually you can watch me pull skin off, actually, see? So that is very, very sharp right there. I would have that addressed before production begins. Uh, and also, the next knife I'm going to be reviewing, uh, I'm not going to say what it is right now because I don't want to take away from this. The, one of the next knives I'm reviewing uh, is also a bolster lock and also has this exact same issue. Um, it, it shouldn't be like that. See this? Almost don't feel that. Almost not there at all. And I don't have any other bolster locks within reach right now. But um, that just needs to be very gently tapered or rounded or something to soften it up. But everything else is great. All the ergonomics were well thought out. It's, it's, it's comfortable in every handhold that I've put it in. That has been the only issue I've had at all. Don't. There's not even a hot spot with the, uh, the pocket clip. Let me kind of get my uh, camera to focus down here again. The pocket clip, no, no hot spot whatsoever. So all in all, excellent work all the way around. Just a couple little nitpicks. And honestly, those nitpicks, I believe, are just going to be related to things that cut costs. That's it. If he wanted to put out a $350, $375 knife, 
there wouldn't be any real exposed hardware. Uh, that, that really wouldn't even be an issue. So the little things that I'm mentioning probably wouldn't be there. But because the consumer market is demanding, hey, we want to get more for less. We want to spend as little as possible. And he really wanted to fulfill that role. That's what you got. And I think it's a damn good knife. Is it in my top five or top 10 of 2022? No, but ooh, it would definitely be an honorable mention. I think it's a very stout knife, well-made, really fun to fidget with and play with. It was built right. And I love, because it's abnormal, this slender Warncliffe. Because we're so used to seeing taller blades on Warncliffe's. I like that a lot. The, uh, the peaks here aren't my particular thing, but it definitely does make the knife stand out and look different than everything else on the market. And at the end of the day, that's kind of an important thing too. He's got the utilitarian part. It, it works. It functions. It does what it's supposed to do. That's the important part. Now that that's done, now let's design it in a way that makes it stand out to be unique in the marketplace. And that's where he chose to do it. And it's pretty cool. Nice little, uh, nice little differentiation from every other bolster lock out there. All right, guys, them is my thoughts. If you have any questions, please put them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, until next time, I'll see you on the next video.